Hi, I'm Scott, and it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Stefan talking about Azure websites. Hey. Um, I have a situation where I've got a, a site that I work on locally, and I have the database locally. And then when I move it up, for a while I was just editing the web config every right. time, and it was really sloppy. And then someone said, well, you should go and do web config transforms, because I've been talking about that for a long time. Yep. And that was cool, and I had web doc Re re um, release doc config. Yep. But then somebody said, no, no, Azure handles that for you. It's a simpler model than a transform. Yes. So, I mean, we realized that uh, the canonical, you know, key value pairs of stuff, of which connection strings are the most common ones, it's a very common thing for developers to deal with. So, Azure Websites has a convenient way that you can go out and store as many connection strings and application settings as you want. We actually store those values in our configuration databases, and then through a little bit of hand waving at runtime, when we spin up your website, we realize that, oh, you gave us a bunch of these key value pairs. Here, we're going to go out and give them to you in the application, and depending upon which framework you're using, um, they can always be accessed as environment variables, so that's nice, regardless PHP. Oh, really? Yep, exactly. All of the non.NET environments can get to these values as environment variables, and then there's a little bit of uh, you know syntactical sugar or magic where if you are running an ASP.NET based app, we can also basically plumb those values right into the managed configuration system, so they just sort of magically show up and work for you at runtime. Okay, so the one that I've got, I think that has the most config is probably Hansel Minutes. So I go to Hansel Minutes on the Azure portal and scroll down. Here we go. We've got a couple of things going on here because okay. I've got app settings. Yep. And I, I set up a thing called New Relic, which is a monitoring system yep. you can find in the Azure Store. And so they wanted these app settings. And I remember that they told me that they needed them to be also environment variables. So they're both. Yes, exactly. So this is a case where Regardless of whether or not you're running a .NET environment, each of these key value pairs show up in the environment variable. So if you were to dump those out in PHP or Node, you'd see these mm -hmm. exact values. Okay, so I could put in other things, like there's some custom ASP yep. thing or web pages exactly. equals enabled, whatever I want I could put in there. Uh, so I could do connection strings then. What if I already have one, though, in the web config? So this is some of the, the special behavior for the connection strings. Typically, right for a for a .NET environment, they have a separate configuration section exclusively for connection strings. Mm -hmm. And so the canonical right use case, as it were, is exactly what you were referring to. You're on your own desktop, you've got your local SQL server, mm -hmm. you have a connection string called blah and it has a value. Well, great. All you do is define the exact same connection string, use the exact same name. And except up here in, um, in Azure, maybe you're giving it a SQL Azure or a MySQL connection string. That's the database that's actually running in the cloud. Now, the cool thing about that is you just sit there as a developer, deploy your app up into Azure websites, and at runtime we'll realize that, oh, you defined a connection string in web config called blah, mm -hmm. but you also gave us a value for blah here inside of Azure websites. So we're smart enough to say, guess what? I'm going to replace the value you had physically in your web config, and I'm going to use this one instead. And that way, your app just, once you deploy it, transparently keeps on working. You don't have to change your code and say, oh, man, I need like five different versions of this connection string. Mm -hmm. Just define it once, define the override here, and when you're running in Azure websites, we'll use the value that you see here in the portal. Okay, so that makes me think about the, uh, from an ASP.NET developer's perspective, the hierarchy of config, that is the machine level config, application host config, web right. config. Yep. There's almost another implied kind of Azure it's, overridden config. Yeah, another way of sort of thinking about it is you alluded to it earlier where you have these concepts of like web config transforms, things like that. Really what it comes down to is there's one last opportunity right when we're spinning up your website to say, hey, is there anything else, you know, after everything's computed, mm. is there one last thing we should do to sort of overwrite and stamp a different value in? And that's what these values do for you. Okay, and I also noticed that from the command prompt using the cross-platform stuff where I could say Azure this and that, I can say Azure site config list and then the name of my site and then this is going to go and call the same API that the portal uses. Yes. And there's the same values. Yeah, and this is actually, as an aside, a very you know important point when you see Scott clicking around through the portal 
looking at all the various settings, these config values, you name it, underneath the hood, all of that is flowing through a bunch of REST API calls, which is why we can build the command line tools so that you can also programmatically do the exact same things that you see us doing through the UI. Right, that's a really important point. So you can go and say, add foo uh, equals bar, uh, and then Hansel minutes, yep. and then that's going to go and call that endpoint. That, that's going to call the API, go store it for you, and then if we refresh the uh, configuration tab here, we'll see that it automatically shows up again because we're all all the data is stored in the same configuration mm -hmm. store, and everyone's basically playing from the same page. And if I were using Node or if I had this application uh, go and look at the environment, I could say response dot write environment dot uh, whatever, and it will Foo. show up. Yes, and it'll show up. And there's foo bar yep. that we brought in from the command line. Yes. Or from some custom script. Yep. Perfect. Very cool. Configurations, app settings, and connection strings on Azure Friday.